Welcome to Street Stoics, the podcast where we discuss Stoicism, the ancient philosophy of living a good life. I'm your host, Bryce, and I'm joined by my co-host, Benny. We're here to help you apply Stoic wisdom to your everyday life, no matter what obstacles you're facing, whether it be work stress, relationship issues, or just the general ups and downs of life. Stoicism has something to offer us all. Hey, here we are, right? Episode one of the Street Stoics. Uh, real excited about this. Uh, Benny, how you feeling? Yeah, excited as well. You know, new uh, new adventure, new journey, new beginnings. So it was good. How are you uh, for it? I'm doing good. Yeah, no, I'm excited about it too. I mean, you know, we've been talking about Stoicism for so long and, you know, one-on-one or, or through uh, social media. That's how Benny and I kind of found each other is through Twitter and then more importantly through Twitter spaces, which we still actively host conversations about stoicism there so we'll put some things out there how you can find us in, in that realm no this podcast was really a long time coming and it's uh real excited about it you know anxious to kind of share what i've learned through my journey in stoicism in the last four or five years and and what you have too i think they're both kind of compelling stories but the cool thing is that what we're trying to accomplish here is making it accessible to everybody else i think that's what I won't speak for Benny, but that's something that we've discussed is, is, you know, what is philosophy and why is it important? And that's something I think a lot of people miss, uh, something I missed for many years, right? You think of, again, philosophy being inaccessible and kind of riddle, and it's something a guy with thick glasses and a beard teaches you about in college. Of course, you had to take, maybe you didn't want to, and it's, you know, it's old, uh, hard to read, all these things. And I know those were thoughts that went through my head at some point in time, but when you really get the right translation of things and you break it down and you slow down, you find out that there's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of answers to the problems we have in life today that were already picked on in depth and with great care and knowledge and expertise by brilliant minds of the past. And I think we focused on stoicism. That's be the fo- focus of this podcast, right? We'll talk about other philosophies, especially Western philosophy and, uh, you know, other elements of life, right? Because they all kind of blend together. Benny and I believe that the philosophy basically brings everything together. So, you know, we're excited to, to, to kind of share how we found philosophy and how it was accessible. Once it was accessible to us, we found those truths. And we just were so excited about it. Say, hey, we wanted to share with other people. That is that accurate, Benny? Is that is that kind of how you feel about it? And that's exactly it, right? And I think what you mentioned about philosophy, and I think people get a misconception about things as stoicism and other philosophies that you have to be an academic. And you know, I'm not, and you, you know, I know that you're not in the sense of you know, like we we see out there what you think of as philosophers. You described it. We're just normal people, right? We're just normal people, and we got to talking, and we've we've been on these uh, these these spaces and conversations, and even in the background, we've had these wonderful long conversations up to the point where we said, you know what, we should record these, and maybe people have uh, that they can benefit from it, and that's something that we've we've noticed from the spaces, the conversations that people come back to us and they 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 say, hey, thanks for this, you know, there's some value in it, and that's kind of what showed me. Um, especially doing, you know, uh, helping you out with your Saturday spaces where we're just talking and people listen. And that kind of opened my eyes and say, there's something here. If people want to hear this, let's share it. And that's why when you mentioned, you know, this, this podcast was a long time coming. I think it's great. And, you know, I hope everybody's listening will enjoy it as much as we do creating it. And one more thing is that it helps me personally to really galvanize these ideas, to really talk about it, discuss it, with people who are not really trying to lecture someone, but trying to listen, grow, help you better understand these these concepts and how to apply them to life. So, yeah, that's why it's 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 amazing that it's starting. I'm excited to see where this is going to, and uh, you know, if they if if it only leads to us having great conversations, hey, we're winning anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm up for it. Yeah, you know, I like the word I, I focused on. What you were saying was galvanize, right? It mm-hmm. lets to you know, take different things and kind of merge them together. And I think that's what we've been doing on Twitter or Twitter X. We'll call it X, right? It's changed. But uh but yeah, for those people who might be listening who don't who don't know it exists, if you out if you're out on the old Twitter or the new X platform, 
uh, you can go and, and you can actually participate in conversations, right, uh, on the uh, spaces. It's called spaces, X spaces. Now it was called Twitter spaces. But that's where me and Benny, again, me and Betty met on that platform. And I've been doing conversations as he has probably around the same over 18 months. So we've been we've been out around kind of preaching stoicism and we've had the opportunity to to, to speak to some uh, the good modern minds in the stoic field. Uh, I also work uh, on the side for WPKN Radio in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I had the opportunity to to interview some important uh, current authors, and we'll talk about some of those names a little bit later. But uh, we've been lucky enough, Benny and I, to have a name or two join us in some of those rooms, too, and discuss Stoicism and Marcus Aurelius and breaking down the translation of the texts. That's kind of what I do. Is I, I focus on the texts, so there's because there's so few Stoic texts that survived, you know, the annals of time. And then Benny talks more about just just general topics related to Stoicism. They're, they're both powerful. You can find us there, of course. But uh, we're glad you found us here. So I guess Benny, maybe we should just do talk about kind of a thumbnail sketch about Stoic philosophy and why it's important and how it applies to us, right? And maybe some of the practices we can kind of tease. But as is a teaser, things we're going to be talking about in the future, but all these things are relevant in that we think it's going to lead to a better life or what William Irvine says, right, leading the good life. Yeah, the, the guide to the good life. That's the, the book by William Irvine. And yeah. that's, what, that's what it is, right? I think when we, when we talk about a philosophy like Stoicism, it's a philosophy of life. I think that for me, when people ask me, hey, why, why is this so important to you? Why do you? keep your books even when you travel and you know, they're now next to me as well because it, it is an important part of my life and why we have these conversations and why we can have conversations for hours you know some of those spaces they go over like two hours and, and I get out of those just you know more energized and knowing more and feeling I've had a good conversation with some like-minded people and even those who are, who are not very familiar or not very are not on the same page, hey, we, we still get to have a good conversation, but it's a philosophy of life. And I think that that is rem- important to remember at the beginning of, of a conversation like this where we go into the, the, the basics, the principles, the kind of the, the history of, of Stoicism to keep reminding uh, ourselves of that, that this is something that we should live by and, and apply, right? That's the most important part where we can all talk about this and and study it, read all, but at the end of the day, in the application, that's where the real power lies of a philosophy like this, like Stoicism. And yeah, I agree. And we should we should cover the, you know, the history uh, for people who don't know about Stoicism, but also some of the, you know, kind of as you said, that to tease a little bit of what we're going to talk about and to show people a little bit of what Stoicism can be useful for. And obviously, in more episodes, we'll go more in depth and we'll show you some deeper. Um, tools and and tricks to to apply it, but yeah, I think that's a, that's a good way to to set it off. So um, I think uh, let's let's start a little bit with the history of uh, Stoicism, like where where it started, where it was founded. Yeah, great way to summarize kind of what our mission statement is here. But yeah, it is important that we talk just a little bit, and we don't want to get too much in depth about the history. We just want to cover it in a way that's that, that's just very very basic, but gives you gives you a little bit of a setup. There's plenty of you know, there's plenty of resources online and in other places to to look more in depth. But just kind of giving you the outline, giving you some of the basic practices and and, and the names, and and why it, it why it's important and and what we're hoping to accomplish here. So, so okay, well, what is Stoicism, right? People say, wait, well, I keep hearing this. What is it? Well, I mean, it, it's an ancient philosophy, right? It goes back to the the uh, the Greco Roman era, right? A lot of people keep hearing it in today's world. Oh, Stoicism, they hear Marcus Aurelius, right? We'll get to him. But it really started in Greece by this guy named Zeno of Sidium. I'm not going to go too much in depth about his specific story, other than to know that he was a great mind of his time who inherited a lot of his thoughts about philosophy originated with with the, the names like Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. So a guy like Zeno comes after that time. So the philosophy was founded in Athens, right? It, it is Greek. Basically, so his, his school, right, the, the, that Zeno started to get some momentum behind it, his his thoughts and what he took from those other names that I mentioned it is based in virtue. So the school of, of Stoicism taught virtue is the highest good. It's based in knowledge. 
talking about the wise man or the wise person, right? So they, they live the highest good, right? It's based in knowledge and, and harmony. And we talk about uh, divine reason is something that comes out in nature, that uh, the divine nature and reason that governs us all, right? So we have some some level of fate and some level of providence that, that works into it. And it's really a, 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 a very accessible philosophy in that when we talk about Stoics, we talk about the Stoa or the street, the common man's philosophy. It's meant to be not so esoteric or weighed down in all these concepts that sometimes will just get your mind going in circles. Uh, they're not going to focus on the origin of things too much or a lot of things you really can't answer, that your mind is just busy like a wheel turning. It's about what is happening. You know, where are we right now? What can we do about it? How do we live a better life? And and further, it's looking at, uh, you know, the human nature, right? I, I always say in my other talks that, that Stoics are masters of human nature, right? They just understand our desires, our impulses, uh, our cravings, and how that affected people at their time, which ironically affects people today very similarly. You know, times change. I don't think people really do as it relates to things like that. Of course, we have different technology and, and, and what we can do and what we can't that way and our, where our societies look are very different in certain ways, but not so much in how people interact with each other, how we see life, how we value things in our time, whatever those things are. You know, you're talking about, again, appetites and desires and, and our biases, our, our, our lusts, these things that are just ingrained in us that we struggle with all the time to live the virtuous life. So we can, you can talk about so many things with stoicism, but just, just remember it's a, it's a pragmatic philosophy that's trying to give you a framework on life. It's based in virtue, right? And there's, we're going to talk about four, there's four cardinal virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom. And we'll break each one of those down in separate discussions, but they have these pillars of virtue and that you're trying to live to your highest self, what they call your personal nature. And that's my highest, most virtuous self blends in with the, everybody else, right? And through what something they call the logos, right? This divine logic and reason that we're all kind of connected to, right? That bi really binds everything together. They have a, they have a concept of a physical nature of the universe and your personal nature, which is kind of your highest virtuous self. And together we all kind of lock arms and, and live in harmoniously. We're all interconnected in some way, but we do have, we do have certain specific things we're respons responsible for as a person, certain things that we, decisions we have to make, try to be virtuous that, that are in our control. And then there's a lot of things that aren't in our control and that's fate and the other parts of the universe that we have to interact with. So it's this constant my, me versus the rest of the world, but trying to find that harmony. And so there's a framework that Stoics use, not just through the virtues, but through certain practices. And we'll talk about those things touch on them today, but we'll talk about them in depth in future conversations. And I guess in a nutshell to say it all, it's just about trying to live a better life, trying to live a more harmonious life, trying to live a life of uh, true tranquility, uh, not just within my own being, but with all those, all those things outside of me that I interact with. So I don't know, Benny, if I took a stab at it, I think it, can you, can you backfill on that? Or what'd you think? Oh, you took a good stab at it there. And it's a, uh... Like when I go, when you go back to like when you mentioned the, the Zeno and the, uh, the virtues, you know, he, he, he brought it back to, to the streets, right? That's, I think, why the name Street Stoics works with it. And um, because Zeno went back to what Socrates did, Socrates just went, took philosophy to the streets for everyone, for every man and woman who was willing to listen. And Zeno did the same. He went to the Stoa Poikile, which was like a painted porch in Athens, and his students would just follow him. And people would hear him talk. And, and that's why from being called as an audience, they went to oh, being called the Stoics. And that's what, what we are trying to do as well, to bring it back to normal conversation where it really helps us. And that's why when you mentioned, you know, it's it's trying to live in, in accordance with nature. That's what Zeno said. He's like, find your nature, apply that introspective, uh, look at who you are. And, and they knew human nature very well. You can read it and you know, modern day therapies are based on it nowadays. We'll, we'll get back to that as well later on. But they they knew it, and if you read the text from even that long ago, you'll be surprised how 
relevant it still is. The examples might be different, but the behavior is still the same. So yeah, when you in when we say that the Stoics have virtue as the highest good, that kind of is a mix, right? Zeno took it as a mix from the from the cynics who were um, cynics meaning dogs who were living on the streets and were just having a cloak and a cup and giving us a, you know being quite obscene to be honest. If you read some of the examples of what they were doing, and Zeno was a student of one of the cynics. And he, he then studied with the Megarians, you know, more of the Socrates, the academics, and he felt a way to make it a little bit better for us to apply it, right? Not as strict, but to have virtue as the, as the highest good. And that's why I think it is important to look at it that way, to see that it is, it is a lived philosophy. And that's why when you mentioned the um, nature, the, the, the providence, the divine, how everything works together, right? The logos. That's where it all comes together, and that's where it makes sense. That's where we can feel this is a philosophy that is pragmatic, that's practical, that gives you the tools to deal with the situation as it as it comes to you. And to add to that, one of the one of the key things is to to look at each moment as itself. And you mentioned that the you know the the reason, divine reason. That's that one part that we've been given from the rational universe. Providence, divine, call it God. That's what we share with it, right? That sets us apart from the rest of of the animals to look at each moment and to apply that reason to it. So that's why they really look at human nature from a different angle. They say, okay, this is who we are, and if we want to live that good life, that this is what we've got to apply. We've got got to leave that judgment apart. We've got to understand our emotions, make sure that we pause those impulses and look at the situation at hand and then apply it from there, right? So that goes throughout the ages. You started with the, you know, as you mentioned, it, it goes from the Greeks and then we go to the to the Roman era up to now. So we can see that it's still coming back and you see, you can see pieces of evidence from Stoicism all throughout different philosophies. And they used to say, and we've been dealing with the Seneca's letters, and it's interesting that he always keeps ending his letters with a quote by Epicurus, the rivaling school back in the day, Epicureanism, who had, had pleasure as the highest good. But Seneca says, you know, if it's if it's true, then it belongs to everyone. So we can see Stoic ideas coming back and philosophies like Buddhism, Taoism, Buwai, and different re- religions. It all kind of boils down to the same, to live a good life. But for me, and I think, you know, for Bryce as well, this speaks to us in its pragmatic and practical way. And it really asks you to put your introspective self at high alert, you know, to apply the four virtues and reason and logic to each situation. I don't know if I, if I added there anything, you know, if you want to oh, add something there. Terrible. Oh, wow. It's a total waste of time. You should have, should have said, no, 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 that's good. Absolutely. And like I said, there's lots of little nuggets that we don't want to get too deep into history or bog, bog anybody down with, with, with too many side conversations or, or, or mentions of things, but but just to know, like Benny said, it's a it's a lived philosophy. If there's two points that Stoics make clear in taking from their predecessors, especially from Socrates, he was very influential in the core concepts of Stoicism, is to say, you know, that a lived philosophy is the only philosophy worth having, right? So uh, we're not going to get uh, sit, sitting under a tree with an apple like I always tease Benny about and just kind of pontificating and just staring and thinking about things too much. It's, it's about action, right? It's, it's, a, it's a call to arms. It's saying, hey, I can't figure out some of these things, but these other things I know are real. You know, you get up each day, the sun has risen, you have work to do, you have responsibilities. And so stoicism is really about that. It's, it's about what is, uh, you know, sometimes a hard look at ourselves and and things around us, you know, what, what is happening? You know, change is happening around us. I accept that change. What am I dealing with? Okay, no. Now, how do I break this down using logic and reason to make progress? So it's, it's a way of looking at life that's very, like the word pragmatic keeps coming back because they, they simplify things and, and they do make it about virtue, right? So if the two things again are going to be a, a lived philosophy is the only philosophy worth having. And then Virtue above all things. That's what Socrates said as well. And so you have those four cardinal virtues that are kind of your pillars that I talked about before. And then you work forward with uh, from there with some practices 
uh, you know, like we'll talk about the dichotomy and control and the preferred indifference, things like that to help keep you focused. But the, the great thing about stoicism is that in a stoic's mind, a, your only purpose is to live virtuously. That being the case, we all, we all have access to, to live virtuously because we have decisions to make. We can use reason and logic, leveraging those four cardinal virtues to be that most virtuous person, right? To live up to my highest sense of personal nature. And therefore, I have purpose. We all have purpose. You hear people stumbling around in life or talking, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, Stoics say your only real purpose in life is to live virtuously. Now, how that manifests as it relates to what job you have, or your relationships and stuff, that those are variables that you probably can't control or control very much. So they don't, they don't worry too much about that. that those are just uh, effects of a process that you're, that you're you know, pushing into. And so that's exciting is that if I say, hey, my purpose in life, really, my main purpose in life is just to live virtuously, to do the best I can with what I have. Those externals I can't control, what fate has kind of put in front of me, I, I will make those best decisions, virtuous decisions, and then what happens, happens, right? And then you adjust after that. But you're, you're fighting the good fight. You're doing everything you need to do. And so that's powerful. Right? And that's another thing about stoicism is it seizes power and it puts it back in your hands. It's, it's saying, I can only control this narrow, this very narrow field of vision. I, it, they shrink down your field of vision to say, hey, put your eggs in this basket. And if you do those things well, you're, you know, you're the virtuous male or woman. You know, you're, you're winning in life. Regardless of outcomes, I'm not going to bind myself to outcomes. I'm going to bind myself to the process. And if I'm always trying to do the right thing, you're on the right path. So it's very empowering. It limits what I'm having to worry about and it focuses me and then it, and it links me into that process and it gives me purpose. So you always have purpose in stoicism. And that's that's really a powerful thing. I don't know, Benny, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, that, that is exactly, you know, that, that, that purpose of, you know, being a good person. If you're asking yourself, yeah, what should I do? Where should I go? What should I be? become you know career wise or whatever that that is not really relevant for a stoics for stoics is just being your best self right living living virtuous um looking at uh, that that everything is you know might be your last day might be your last moment in life and how are you going to spend it are you going to spend it well or are you going to spend it bad and that is a decision that everybody has to make for yourself and the stoics are very clear right? even marcus already says it whether it's the god or the atoms that doesn't make a difference. I only have the moment right now to be the best version of I can uh, of myself. And for me personally, that is that is very empowering, right? That gives you the the the, the chance to look at everything coming at you and say, what is the, the what is the choice that I have right now? As you mentioned, that the, the stoic fate versus that sliver of free will that we have, and that's what the you know the dichotomy of control. And we're gonna have episodes in that as well. It's a very important concept, but it also kind of brings me to. A little bit of like what stoicism isn't. I think that that might also be important to kind of, you know, to to highlight quickly is that that lowercase s stoicism versus the uppercase s stoicism, which means you know the lowercase s stoicism is to repress all your emotions, to put everything aside, you know, to to just keep going. That upper stiff, that stiff upper lip, and that's what not what stoicism is. And now, after a lot of conversations, that's why they're great. If people ask me, okay, how would you describe Stoicism? It's it's pretty similar to something like Buddhism or Taoism, but it's to live a peaceful life, to find that peace of mind. And how can that be done? By living in accordance with virtue, with nature. When everyone, Marcus Aurelius mentioned at one point in his meditations, if anyone asks you what's on your mind, you can truthfully answer what's on your mind because you have nothing, you've got nothing to hide. You're just doing what is right. And I think that that is a really powerful way of looking at life and making it easier. And it is also uh, gives us a great, great set of, of tools to, to make it easy, even in the most difficult times. So when we talk about what is stoicism, we also should look at, you know, what stoicism isn't. And uh, unfortunately, one of those, and a lot of the, there's many out there who show the wrong side of stoicism, like using your anger, you know, because that's, that's, that's how you get the power, right? Stoics talk about anger being quite of a dangerous emotion. They talk about the emotions to be be careful about how you use your emotions. 
Stoics, the capital S Stoics, they say, understand your emotions, know yourself, know where they're coming from, find that underlying belief, and then work from there to to see them coming, the triggers, and maybe even then use them in the right way. But at least you're knowing where they're coming. So I think that that is also quite a distinction to make here just quickly to say, okay, you can read about Stoicism, but be mindful what kind of Stoicism you're reading about. And then its foundation and its basics, Stoicism is a wonderful, pragmatic philosophy that helps you live a better life. And if people are propagating something else, then, then you have to, yeah, be, be mindful of that. Yeah, no, excellent points. And, you know, I have that written down too, is is what Stoicism isn't. So we've been talking about kind of what it is and, you know, how it, it, it originates in Greece. And then we, we're kind of touching how it, it really gets popularized in Rome, right? So there's few different stages of stoicism they, 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 they outline, outline three to just to get away from that you know you think if there's names like Zeno and Cleanthes and Chrysippus and those are in the early those early first couple of stages that people should be mindful of and, and then it eventually it ends up in Rome where it gets really popularized and so many people listening to this podcast will have heard of Seneca or Epictetus or certainly uh, Marcus Aurelius so these are, there's a lot of quotes you see out there, very positive, very uplifting and motivational. They memes on, on social media where you hear people mentioning these things. So that's, that, that kind of pulls us through the, 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 you know, the, the important part where this, where these ideas form. Right. And, and so once that happens, so we, we, we read about these people and, and these quotes and hear things and. You're right. People start talk, talking talking about stoicism, and that it leads down a path. Well, really, what is a sto- what is a stoic? And people really go to the dictionary and just look up the word stoic, small case uh, s, and see the noun there. It's talking about somebody who's unemotional and and represses things like that. So the the so as we're hearing about stoicism in those early days, it's very easy just to take that root word there and just say, okay, well, that's what it's about. You know, this this that guy's very stoic. That woman's rather stoic and you think of somebody with this kind of a grim lock jaw and <laughs> staring straight forward and and that type of thing but but that's the one definition the uppercase right is the philosophy which is very nuanced and like benny was talking about it it isn't about suppression of emotion it's about identifying emotion and how these emotions affect us it's being really in touch with yourself because it's a very personal thing you know when you talk about anger and 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 uh, you know frustration, love, any love, any desires, or any any emotions of any kind, right? Uh, that's a very personal thing. We feel these things very differently, but at a baseline, there's an understanding of and throughout history of how these emotions affect people and how they affect decisions. And there's there, like I said, there's plenty of especially with anger. Stoics love to talk about anger because at that time. You know, some of these were, uh, Seneca was a very powerful man. Marcus Aurelius was the emperor of Rome at, at, at uh, the near height of Imperial Rome. And so the, the, the anger back then went a long way with these powerful people and causing a lot of death and misery and pain. Uh, again, Stoics being masters of human nature, they, they just want to address that. They want to address our emotions. So it's not about suppressing them. It's about understanding them, especially on an individual level. And to some level, compartmentalizing them, just saying, hey, how am I going to use these emotions appropriately? How am I going to leverage them to make the best decisions? That's where the reason and logic come in, right? We're, we're, we're using the logos, right? This, this pure reason and logic that they talk about. We'll talk about the logos and what that means to Stoics. But it's basically, again, the pure reason and logic that we're flowing into, that everybody, every human has access to. And that reason and logic allows me to make the best decisions allows me to leverage these emotions to, to my best advantage or better what's best for the community. And that's another thing I wanted to say about stoicism that gets, that gets confused, right? So not only do they confuse the word stoic, small s with stoicism, capital S, the, you know, the philosophy, the nuanced ideas that stoics as a philosophy have, but there's, you know, there's this idea that, you know, it's an individualistic philosophy, right? It's focusing only on self-discipline because they're always asking to look within or it's, but really that's about empowerment. That's about being your best self. Why? Because 
there's a certain social responsibility right that comes out of stoicism it preaches loving one's neighbor you know forming virtuous relationships with others and and helping others as well right the, as marcus aurelius talks about in meditations your decisions as a stoic are based on what's best for the whole what's best for the community community when applicable right sometimes that's not going to apply but that that's your where you're leaning in first is like, how does this decision that I can make, if the decisions that I can make that can be influential, right, which is a narrow scope in a Stoics world, how does it impact the group, the community at large, my family, whatever, everything outside myself? So Stoics are, are not, it's not about individualistic philosophy. It's really about getting bet my best outcome for the group through internalizing and self-reflecting deeply you know, to try to get my best control of myself. I'm trying to control my emotions and use them appropriately. I'm trying to control my decision making to best help the group, right? To help others. And one other thing I wanted to touch on too, a note that I had made, was it's not an elitist philosophy, right? Because there was a thought that all the, all the when we think about Stoicism, we think about those 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 Roman names again, Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius. But it's not meant for elitists, right? It was popular at that time, but it's really accessible to any everybody, like. Benny was talking about it's taught in the streets, right? It's the common person, the common man, the common person's philosophy. And so that should always be embraced or, or, or acknowledged that, that some of the most well-known Stoics are high profile people who are people who are very powerful, but it's not for the, it's not for the elites. It's really for everyone. And so that was just one other or a couple other notes I wanted to point out outside of just the the, the word stoic being a point of confusion. Yeah, great points there, Bryce. And I think uh, especially when we, you know, that, that confusion is important to to get rid of, right? That I think that's so kind of what we are all, what we're trying to do here to make sure that people know what it is that stoicism really is and how it helps because it is it is like a medicine. And if, you, if you've been given the wrong medicine, then you might use it in the wrong way or you're given the right medicine and use it in the wrong way. That's That's harmful. And I think that that's a, it's also a responsibility for those who who study kind of philosophy and who who want to share it with others to make sure that it's right. And that's all that's what we're trying to do, right? And I think that that's a, that's really important. Um, yeah, and, and I think um, we're, we're going to touch on some things, maybe people to read or some things. Uh, I don't know what you want to you know, to kind of look at because yeah. I think we kind of discussed stoicism pretty much uh, pretty pretty well here so far. Pretty well, uh, yeah. And I think that maybe one more takeaway before we go there is just that it's really a framework. It's not a religion. It's something you, you, that could actually work in parallel with some of uh, your religious beliefs. And it's very modular. There's things that you can take from it, that just certain pieces, and use it at will. It's kind of an all a cart thing. So, I mean, we we talked about the history and such. We the one thing we didn't touch about were just or maybe slightly work the, the practices, like what are modern day applications, right? And that's what Benny really want to, Benny Benny really want to emphasize is how do we take, you know, these readings, these quotes, these ideas, these concepts, this framework, and how do we use this today? What is the modern day application? Because that's what it's all about, right? Because our claim, and what I think is proven to be true is, a lot of the things that the Stoics were preparing for themselves at the time still apply to us today, and, can, and their findings can still help us today. So, so I just again, a couple of those applications worth noting, and we'll talk about them in depth. Is a dichotomy of control. You know, I'm not going to worry about those things that I can't control completely. And what can I control completely? Very few things. It's how I see the world and how I react to it. In a nutshell. It's based in that, and that really narrows your field of vision. And again, it empowers you, right? It gives you a chance to really make an impact on certain things, not worrying, trying about to impact everything. It, it just keeps us focused. And and we talk about that uh, preferred indifferent indifference, right? Again, that's just I'm going to be non-judgmental as much as possible. We all have so many opinions about everything. It's just a reflex reaction. It, then, as it is now. And I think that hasn't changed either, right? So to just try to kind of mind your own business for the most part, you know, pay attention to the things, again, that impact the community. But outside of that, I'm really going to kind of mind my own yard and have my neighbor. It's responsible for his too. So we all have 
some personal responsibility as respo also responsibility to the group. But again, it's a narrowing thing. So I'm, I'm just going to try to stay out of being a busybody and just having such strong opinions about everything, you know, because we all, we all do. And so those are kind of a couple, couple of key things. And they all work, they also like negative visualization and uh, they're big about internalizing goals. And again, we'll talk about those things. But I did want to point out real quickly uh, before we go to kind of some books for people to kind of read if they want to fill in some of these gaps or some names of some current Stoics that are important. I, I don't know if I missed anything as it re relates to kind of practices. Benny, did you want to talk about anything there? Yeah, you know, the, exactly the ones that you mentioned, right? The, the internal, the negative visualization, the preferred indifferences, the control. And those are some really key elements with, which we can read and, you know, from Epictetus. And he really starts out with that very strong and your wants and desires, understanding them and making sure that you don't act out of those. And, and other kind of methods that we've seen, you know, Marcus really has his meditations. The, that was his journal. That was his personal journal. So journaling. Um, meditating, I think that those are some some really good tools that we can also see from maybe not meditating specifically in a, a, as in examples here, but at least the journaling. And at, what we can take away from this as well is that it's we always these tools are ready for us to use, and we need to make sure that we know how to use them and when to use them and which ones work best for us. But the Stoics have have really looked at a lot of these you know things that we struggle with even this long, and a lot of them, they still work right now. So I think that that is important to, to look at. So yeah, no, the negative visualization, um, the, the dichotomy of control, which is a big one, the preferred indifferences, right? Whether you, that's kind of what set the Stoics apart from the cynics, where Zeno said, you know, the Stoic, the cynics, they were all about an aesthetic lifestyle where they said, no, virtue is the only good. Zeno came around and said, okay, you know, virtue is the only good, but though I prefer to be wealth, uh, prefer to be healthy, to ill, I prefer to be wealthy to poor. You know, I prefer to have certain things than others. But as long as they don't control me, you know, that's why the preferred indifference is they kind of show up and say this is this is kind of the thing that set set the Stoics apart and made it a little bit more accessible to the to the bigger community out there. That's why the cynics they were kind of looked at as as uh, you know frowned upon, and the Stoics they were embraced because that's a more applicable and practical philosophy. To say, hey, you know what? These are the things that I prefer. They might not always happen, and that's where Stoic faith comes in, right? Stoics they say you you have these things; they're on loan, and you have to be ready to give them give them back whenever you whenever it's necessary, and whenever fortune comes around and says, okay, you you've enjoyed it. Now you've got to give it back, and you've got to do that with acceptance. And those are like the, the you know the acceptance and being grateful, living in the moment. Those are big key points of of Stoics as well, to make sure that you are understanding where your agency lies, and it lies right now here in the moment. So when we talk now about in modern days about mindfulness, hey, that, that's the Stoics, you know, they, they already knew about that back in the day. So yeah, no, those are some great, some great tools and some great things that the Stoics can teach us about how to live a better life. And as you mentioned as well before, you know, at the end of the day, this is our personal responsibility that we have to make sure that we are a better better person for the sake of society because only we can only benefit of society can only benefit from us if we are our best version of ourselves so that's kind of what what the stoics want to want to lead to and and at the end of the day then it's a win-win you you get to live a better life and society gets to gets to uh, bear the fruits of you know, being a better you i think that that's a that's a good kind of call and uh, maybe you know look at some books uh, and then before we wrap it up to, yeah. to get all point people in the right direction Right, right. We said a lot there, and for for folks who maybe have some uh, knowledge or you know previous experience with Stoicism, like it, it's easy to kind of absorb that and kind of nod your head. But yeah, there's there's a lot there, and we hope it wasn't too much for everybody to begin with. But there, there's again, there's plenty of resources online too to dig deeper, and we just wanted to give a fair representation of kind of what we're going to be talking out of, kind of the mindset that we have when we're discussing these points is based out of all that. Yeah, we should talk about like the important books that are that are core, the ancient books that are core to, uh, you know, the philosophy, and that are worth having around. And then we should talk about like more some more contemporary authors. So the the books that you need to focus on, um, are, you know, my personal feeling and Benny will back me up. Maybe have more 
is, you know, when you, when you talk about the, the ancient readings, there's so little that survived, unfortunately. Like a lot of things from ancient history, it, they get destroyed or they get lost. So supposedly there's a lot of writings from Stoics that go back to the Greek times. And you know, where we're mentioning Zeno and there's a important figure in the early, the early Stoic named Chrysippus who had hundreds of works supposedly uh, that were destroyed or lost, that nothing survived except fragments. So what we're really left with comes from the Roman era, you know, that third stage. So you have uh, the names, the three big names we mentioned were Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius. So it's worth noting right up front that the one that you're going to hear the most is, is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So that is core to your uh, your Stoic reading needs. That's one you should have in your bookcase for sure. It's the, if not the most important book of the ancient Stoic books that survived, which is really his journal, which is fascinating too. There's a lot around that, but uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations is probably the book to have if you could have one. But there are others that are important. So Epictetus, who was really a predecessor to Marcus Aurelius and somebody that Marcus looked up to, uh, wrote an important book called The Discourse. So you have the Discourses and the Enchiridion. These are things attributed to Epictetus. And then you have uh, Seneca, right, who who came before both of those particular individuals where he has his, his letters. Uh, you'll see that referenced in, in different ways. But I think those are the, the three core books to have, and there's really not that many outside of that. There, there are going to be a collection of notes and fragments and things of the ancient writings. And I'll, Benny, you want to add anything to that before we talk about any, any contemporary writings to have? Yeah, I think the, there's a couple of uh, essays available from Lusonius Rufus, who was um, Pectitis' teacher. And from the old ones, you have a historic, an historic a historian called Diogenes Liartes. He has some, uh, he has a book called, uh, he has actually two books, Lives of the Eminent Philosophers, and then you have book seven. He has no book, he's got 10 books, but book seven is on uh, Stoicism, on the Stoics. And that's where he talks about Zeno, Cleanthes, uh, Chrysippus, and some others in between as well. So that that's an interesting one. Um, it's a, Yeah, it, 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 it's not like real long text by them, but it's just some, some a description of how they lived. So no, and I think you know the the Enchiridion, as you mentioned, the uh, Epictetus, Seneca's letters. You have Seneca's essays, um, so really interesting uh, letters written by him. And you can see that that's there's a different kind of tone between Epictetus and Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. So that's really interesting to read those three to give you a, a better perspective of what was going on, and especially in a later Roman era, as you mentioned. Um, so yeah, those are the great letters and. And if we go a little bit further ahead of time, we have one of my favorites, Michel de Montaigne. He also refers to Seneca a lot and also to Cicero. Cicero is also, by the way, an important one to read. He wasn't really necessarily a Stoic. He was more of an academic philosoph philosophical-wise, because, but he, because he wrote so much, he gave us a really good insight into Stoic philosophy. And there's some really interesting letters uh, that he's written uh, that you, yeah, that those are important to read and to look into, just as a background of philosophy as well, the Stoic philosophy. So yeah, those are you know, and Michel de Montaigne, as I mentioned, he's a he's a really interesting character to read about. So I definitely re I recommend reading his uh, his essays. And then we can see, you know, Descartes, Spinoza, they're all kind of influenced by Stoicism as we had, you know, back to modern days. Um, yeah, and if, if for me, some of the the the, the Key books that I've read on Stoicism, we talk about, you know, someone like William Irvine, as we mentioned before, The Guide to the Good Life. Massimo Pigliucci wrote How to Be a Stoic. And uh, we have Donald Robertson, you know, names that are quite familiar right now, um, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. And and then there's one more that it is quite, yeah, it, it is still out there. It's uh, it's quite famous as well. It's uh, by uh, uh, Pierre Hadot. It's The Inner Citadel. Those are kind of my my go-to books for for stoics i don't know if you wanted to add no those are the right names i mean i would agree definitely we you, you talked about uh massimo pigliucci he also wrote a book called a handbook for new stoics that's pretty good and we, we touched on donald robertson how to think like a roman emperor who we've actually talked to multiple times and has been part of our some of our discussions on uh, twitter x 
that endless uh, spaces that we talk about. And then there's another, somebody else that's worth noting is Ryan Holiday, right? He's really repopularized uh, Stoicism uh, through his writings and his teachings and his YouTube streams and everything else. Uh, he's really probably the biggest name uh, in for current Stoics as it relates to, relates to thought leaders and, and people producing media content. So uh, The Obstacle is the Way is his really popular book that he wrote a series of them that were pretty popular, you know, that Stillness is the Key. And, you know, there, there's others I don't have right in front of me, but I would say, yeah, Ryan Holiday, Massimo Pigriucci, Donald Robertson are in important current names that I would have uh, on my list for sure. And that's that's a good place to start. And there's there's other people uh, out there that are worth uh, researching that have uh, maybe not books associated with them, but writings and other teachings like uh, Greg Sadler, Dr. Greg Sadler. He's somebody you can find uh, on YouTube pretty easily who's... Uh, Pretty powerful in the Stoic uh, modern sto Stoic movement as well. So th those are names I would I would focus on. I don't know if that does that make sense, Benny? Definitely, those are the names that you want to you want to look into. And a lot of people, as you said, they start with Ryan Holiday, and then you progress to to other books and different texts and to the to the original letters. And I think it makes if you want to start with reading about Stoicism, and there's a lot of YouTube videos out there as well. Uh, to find more information about it. But if you want to have a mix, you can read an ancient text, read a modern book, read an, read an ancient text. For example, I have a list of books where you could read, for example, you start with Marcus Aurelius and then read uh, Donald Robertson's uh, How to Think Like a Ro Roman Emperor because he really delves into into that book, right? He really shows you the meditations. And then if you read the handbook or if you read Epictetus, um, if you read Epictetus, then you can go to Massimo Pigliucci's uh, how to be a Stoic, because he has kind of a conversation with, with Epictetus. So, yeah, you can mix it up if you want to kind of, if you want to delve into and you want to look into the Stoic books and really research a little bit more. Those are the kind of mixes you can make. Y'all good stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot of homework out there for everyone to do. And, and yeah, we wanted to just, to, you know, get this first episode off and uh, not, you know, not be too, uh, too boring, I guess. Uh, I mean, we're really, uh, really compelling individuals we have uh, a lot of fun we're gonna laugh a lot hopefully and, and share some good uh, personal anecdotes and stories but it, it's important to set that foundation of you know what are we talking about here what are our conversations based out of you know what is that framework what's that belief system and then we're going to make mention not just as some of these ancient stoics but current uh, authors you know that kind of the new the new stoic movement and, you know, kind of where we're part of that ourselves, I guess. So it's important to kind of lay that foundation, put that out there. And and, and hopefully we didn't uh, put anybody to sleep. Well, I'm sure we didn't. I think we did. And I know mentioning that we are probably one of those out there right now. Yeah. Why not? You know, I we, we, we talk about it and we, we come out of this in good faith. And we want to just share what we think is important, what helped us make our lives better and why these teachings can help you. And that's what we're here for, why we're here to do it. And yeah, we'll, we'll, have, uh, we'll have some fun, we'll have some laughs, and, but we'll also touch on some things that probably help you live a better life. And yeah, hopefully it, uh, it was good, pleasant to hear. And yeah, this first episode will hopefully lead to many more. Oh yeah, it definitely will. And, and yeah, so the good stuff is coming. If that was, hey, if you thought that was good, you got a lot more good stuff coming. We're going to try to actually give you some practical answers to some common day problems that these uh, ancient minds had worked out quite some time ago in, in one shape or another, at least gave us some ideas of how to tackle uh, some of these, uh, you know, real today issues. And Benny and I have had some success with it. And, you know, we'll be sharing our personal stories as we go along and, you know, interjecting that into the conversation as well. But we really do believe this is something that can be helpful to everyone in some some form. That's the whole reason why we're doing this all reason why we've uh, been out on social media and in other mediums trying to talk stoicism up for a while it's based out of that that's our drive and and, and that's been our payoff is been, uh, people coming back to us with with such good positive feedback so we want to just keep propagating that and hey i mean everybody live a, a better life it's a pretty good goal in my way i look at things how about you and you think uh, yeah that's, that's what it's, it's worth shooting for right it's worth uh 
you learn something good and pass it along. That's a very stoic thing as well. When you buy into that, you, you feel really good about it. You know, your day-to-day living, you know, the things you acquire, I'm going to pass on to somebody else and maybe they're going to further refine it and who knows what that turns into but yeah i'm excited yeah me too and uh, let's keep you know let's keep this going and let's learn from from those who, who've experienced it before us and share it with those who need to hear it still and that's kind of what we're out here for and that's what we're trying to do and we do that to you know to each other when we have those conversations and keeping ourselves honest making sure that we we live all of this and and just enjoying it and having a good time as well along the way so that's it. That's what we're about. We, 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 we can talk about. We can talk about philosophy and have a good time too. Is that possible? I thought it was this staunchy, brittle, crusty old stuff that doesn't uh, apply anymore. We, we can actually it actually applies, and we can have fun doing it. Who thought? Who thought that? Yeah, we thought that was possible. You know, living in oh, wow. it being two thousand years old, and you know, walking around the streets, talking to people. You know, that's that's what we're doing. We're just walking the virtual streets. Watch it. Walking the virtual streets. I like that. The street stoics walking the virtual street, the street spreading the gospel of stoicism. I like that. That's us. You know, that's us. Oh, yeah. I want to hear these guys. Let's say, hey, they're they're, they're talking a big game. They better deliver, right? Yeah, yeah. We're putting the pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That It's coming. It's coming. So thanks, everybody, for hanging in there in this first episode. And, and uh, get ready for, you know, buckle up because good things are coming. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks everyone, and I hope to see you in the next episodes. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and leaving a review. Your feedback helps us reach more like-minded listeners on this journey of self-improvement. And remember, you can reach us on X, at Bryce at Stoic Bryce, Benny at The Stoic Padawan, or look at our website, streetstoics.com. You want to get in touch with us? Email us at streetstoics at gmail.com. And remember, virtue is the only good.